the yellow Isengard player Eterno versus the blue Elven player Maru on the beautiful map Sorowile. This is Sorowile, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary pirate map. And you know what makes this map so special is a feature which nobody is using. <laughs> That's the ship right, right here, the dock. You can capture this dock and then get some, you know, either some transport ships or attack ships or siege ships and go ham. But I don't think it makes too much sense because the size of the map isn't that big. So walking from this location to this location isn't the end of the world. So recruiting or capturing this for a sneak attack isn't really worth it, you know, because the, you know, the recruitment of this and going all the way around like this is going to take you way more time than just walking forward. You know what I mean? But when you do this, you can also get your units out here. This tower is acting like a creep. You can kill the Corsairs around the tower and then destroy the tower and get some money, make some bank. Isengard for Isengasm, but Isengard, Isengasm left, you know, he left. And for, maybe he will be watching this video later on on Twitch. If yes, then he will like it. He will like it. Okay, so what is the plan? Isengard against Elves can be a good matchup. And uh, that was the time in which we have seen Sharku a lot of times actually as a counter to the Elven clumping. Maybe that's going to be one of these games. Um, you have also the chance to go for war riders, of course, you can go for lords, you have like crazy eco, uh, you know, it's like a very interesting matchup, I would say, eco power against uh, archer power, so the watcher can be a game winning point when the elven army is getting too, too strong, you can just, you know, use one power point, the watcher from Isengard spellbook and boom, the army is gone. Even though I would say Isengard is like kind of not, not not like a very strong faction early game. Now you might say, but Uruks are very strong. Yeah, true, Uruks are strong, but they are also very expensive. They cost 400 each, you know. And also the Uruk Frostbowmen, they cost 350. Uruk Pikemen, they cost 350. So they are, they, you have no cheap units. When you want to have cheap units, you need to build the uh, Wildmen of Dunland camp. Creeping, easy peasy, the builder in the middle. And look at this. The lands are opening into the creep behind. So will Maru try to make it happen? Will Maru try to capture the dock, go for the transport ships and go ham? You know what's the problem with the transport ships? Um, the problem is that you can only put like two units inside of it, you know? <laughs> so in order to make it kind of effective, you need to have like three transport ships in total, you know? Okay, this is being captured. And also, this one is going to be creeped by Eternal. And Eternal is getting away with, with it, actually, without any punishment. Because Mario was also playing it a little bit more defensively. So, in, when it comes to rewarding, uh, creeping a troll layer is way more rewarding than creeping work layers or goblin layers. Way more. Is it possible to download maps from you? Yeah, of course. I mean, we have actually most of the maps we have also in the Discord. There is a maps channel in the pfme files there are maps most of the time not always but most of the time you can get all the maps you have you see on this channel also in discord just download them and put them into your maps folder you have and drums, thanks for the follow appreciate it Over here, elves. Cleanse these lands. claim these lands big push isn't coming that's a beautiful uh, cavalry push bursting down the furnaces like nothing and I think, uh, when I think about it, you know, the, the nerf to the HP of the resource buildings might actually benefit those cavalry opening factions like Men of the West, Elves, and even factions like, for example, uh, like Warg Riders start from Isengard. And even Troll, troll Kitch opening from Mordor, for example, because now the Trolls can take down, not like this though. Oh, that's a bad trample. <laughs> Okay, this is what you're supposed to not do, you know, what you're supposed to not do in this situation. You don't, you, you shouldn't run into the pikemen like that. There, another. I will represent the men of Gondor. Uh, Captain, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so, pikemen are moving forward. The Marlon tree is going to be taken down. Uh, 450 command points versus 500. Eternal is a bit ahead. 
and he's gathering a full army. So this army is looking pretty strong. He also went for the clan setting level 2 right off the bat to recruit some Viteman extrovers, but his command points kept. He's going for the Uruk number 2. And this army is looking pretty strong, right? So we have three pikemen, one crossbowman, and one extrova. So he has literally no Urukai. <laughs> he went just all out for the pikemen, just to counter the cavalry. So now the question is about how much damage will he be able to deal. Extrovers are pretty good against archers, by the way, if you don't know. They can kill the archers in a few seconds. Your crossbowmen are taking care of the enemy Lorian warriors, and your pikemen can fight against everything else. Gotta make sure to protect your backline. That's all you gotta do. Extrovers are bullying. The Malone tree in the front is gonna be taken down. It's almost level 2. That hurts. Isengard. Against the power of Isengard, there can be no victory. Where is Isengasm to see this? Charge into pikes. That's what you are supposed to avoid. Okay? The push is still happening. I think in this situation, you should never try to kill the pikemen in the porcupine formation. Because, you know, realistically speaking, they are just too strong. They are too tanky to be killed this easily. Okay, the push continues. He has not many archers on the field yet, but maybe when the rallying, when the Warchan buff is gone, maybe that's the time for you to kill them. Because look how tanky they are in the porcupine formation. And remember, that's the armor fixed version pikemen. Trust me on that one, boys. Earlier, before they fixed the armor and armor nerf fix, um, was done, I believe, in the version 8.2 or 8.3. I'm not, I'm not sure. But before that, they would get 100% more armor in the porcupine formation. And it would stack with the whole ground stands and the war chant, they would legit be in impossible to be killed. You would need to spend like your entire evening to kill one pikeman battalion. And still it's quite hard, you know? Okay, furnace level 2, that's good. Uh, after the first couple of minutes, we have 475 command points in the bank for Maru. He was, he was going for a risky trample but getting away with it, no problem. The, the well can heal them up all the way to full HP anyway. It's not a big deal for the good factions like elves, dwarves, or men to go for plays like that. As long as you can save one unit from your battalion, you should be just in a good spot. And his opponent has 800 command points of The channel is going ham in this game. Playing also very well with the dwarven faction in the previous game. The same also with the Isengard faction in the game number 3. Starting off with a bad foot, with a wrong foot in the series, being 1-0 behind, but showing dominance. In the game number two and number three. Devastation gives you a great chunk of money and a great counter to the cavalry could also be Sharku because then you can perma cheese and get some lancers to finish them off, you know. Aizen has almost the whole map, yeah, true. True, true, true. 800 command points. 500 command points for Maru. That is a well coming for the second uh, second well, for the speed of the regeneration. I mean, the problem is, even though he has like lots of units on the field, but only a few of them can actually deal damage to the buildings. And again, that's one of the weaknesses of the Alvin faction, right? Because you are not supposed to be a great faction in killing enemy units and also enemy buildings at the same time. Extrovers. Dealing not too bad damage against the Lorien against the Malone tree. It will take them. It will take them definitely some time, you know, to destroy it. Maybe they won't be able to finish it. Maybe I don't know. We will find out. Okay, Isengard is disengaging. Um, there is a lens. What Saruman? Okay, dude. A new power is rising, and victory is at hand. But my lord, there is no such force. Are you sure about that? He destroyed the Malone Tree, that's big. It's actually big, because now the album player has only one level 2 Malone Tree left on the field. Um, Isengard on the other side is 1, 2, and almost 3. 575 versus 700. It's a huge gap in the command points department, and Saruman is very strong you know very very strong he can make stuff happen in this game and for me the power spike of saruman is so much sooner to achieve first of all he's moving faster than gandalf right when gandalf is on foot he's like moving in slow motion and his level 2 is so much better like i would take the fireball every day of the week against the lightning sword and the fireball is like a powerpoint farming machine it's like like low cooldown you can use it from a long distance from a safe distance over and over again until you get your thunderbolt unlocked with level six 
And that's where the fun begins, you know? Fireball, Thunderbolt, rotations. Use it, use it, use it. Wipe out army here, wipe out army there. And all of that while keeping your distance from the enemy units. While being in a, in a safe zone, you know? There comes the big push with the war chant. Tom Bombadil. Now, there was not... What? No. The, I, I'm sw I swear to you, the Palantir was no looking... Was looking like... Oh, 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 look, 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 look. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss that. Watch this, watch this. Go, 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 go. Over here. What? Boom, son. Okay. Oh, look at them shining bright like a diamond. They are glowing white and yellow at the same time. Thank you very much for those. I appreciate it. Really means a lot. Glad you enjoy them. I mean, almost level 2. Unfortunately, he couldn't get it yet. Get it yet. And once again, Fireball is fun. <laughs> A new power. <laughs> I'm joking. <clears throat> A new power is rising. Level two. Do it. Just do it. Take this. Okay, that was overkill on the Lorien Arch. <laughs> but they are running. They are running like Denitor did on <laughs> on uh, Minas Tirith. Hey DJ, welcome. Okay, so Saruman is now level 2. As you can see, Fireball recharging quite fast. So you can, you know, use it on, in rotation. You can just bail, wait for the cooldown, come back, use it, and do that over and over again until you get finally level 6. Then you have also Thunderbolt. I will represent the men of Gondor. Uh, Samida, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. The Malone tree is going to get destroyed, definitely. Yeah. Power point wise, we have 6 power points after the miss. So he will try to go for the, for the Eagles. But he needs 9 more power points for that. And his opponent has six power points after the devastation. Devastation will lead you later on, eventually, to the uh, seat, to the field of fires. Do it, Saruman. Take this. <laughs> Bizarre differential. Bizarre differential, boys. Level three. Look at this. He's, he looks angry. He doesn't look satisfied yet. He's not happy yet. This is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Did you guys see the fireball? <laughs> it's kind of like flanked like this. Like, this guy's like a soccer player or something. Level 4 is now the speechcraft. The Vork Sentry for the defense. Industry unlock from the spare book. Isengard is about to make bank. You want to have money, money, money. A lot of money. But Eisner is running for his life now. What is happening? The builder is gonna get in safety. I mean, you know, eagles can actually achieve something. Eagles can do stuff. He went for a giant eagle from the fortress. But remember, that's too loud. This is too loud, man. I need to put it a bit more. Deaf to my ears. Deaf to my ears. Oh, this is gonna be one of these days, boys. This is gonna be one of these days. Hopefully not. Do it, Saruman. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Fireball them. Fireball them. You had the chance to do that. The build has been killed, by the way, but he didn't use the opportunity and the chance to fireball. And Eagle is sitting level 2. You know, hold ground stands to get a bit more tankiness. So he gets a little bit more armor, losing damage, but you don't need damage when you are flying away anyway. And it's very important to learn and play around with the battle stances in these games. Because you get so much value when you kind of master them in the in a right way. Um, if you don't know, the eagles or the flying heroes generally are quite weak against extroverts. So extroverts are dealing bonus damage to them. And Isengard should be able to burst them very fast. Remember, Isengard cannot get leadership until you get lords on the field. And your Lourdes has to be level 5 to give leadership to make the units a bit stronger. But this Isengard player never recruited Lourdes. And oh, the Eagles, the Eagles are coming. Three Eagles to rule them all. The one who's looking different is the one from the fortress. But he killed the most important industry buffed uh, furnace. That's quite, uh, you know, 
That's quite... That hurts. Beautiful fireball from Sarma. Oh my goodness! Amazing fireball indeed! And that's what I'm talking about. I would take the fireball over the lightning sword every single day of the week. For me personally, fireball is better than Easter Light and better than lightning sword combined, you know? Such an amazing ability with low cooldown too. He just used it. It's already 50% back again. Hotbot, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. And actually, Alvin Play is coming back into the game. Isengard had a phenomenal start into the game. But look at the minimap now. The Eagle is doing a phenomenal job, putting immense pressure. He just killed another builder. And this Eagle you can afford to lose, no problem, right? Because it's from the summon anyway. And remember, you don't get any power points from killing summon units. Okay, beautiful boys. So, um, this game is far from being over. Isengard went for two power points, which are giving him money, devastation and industry. But of course, the combat stats from the Eagle Summon, the amount of stuff you can achieve with the Eagle, special summon from your spellbook, is kind of immense. And he's dropping down to 400 command points. He just lost, literally, in the last two minutes, he lost like two builders. Oh, 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 he chunked the Eagle too with Fireball. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, Saruman is legit the only hope for <laughs> Isengard. That's the only way. But you can see what the Elven player is doing, right? He's avoiding the army because they are slow. They cannot keep up with the speed of the cavalry. They cannot keep up with the speed of the eagle. And then he can, you know, get stuff done with the infantry units in the meantime. I will represent the men of is Gondor. literally forced to run from one location to the other location. DJ. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Make sure to welcome. Towering up now. It's it's looking rough. It's looking rough for Eternal. It was looking good though. It was looking good, but it was oh beautiful. Level five needs one more level, one more level to be super Saiyan. Look, he has splash damage too. Look him. Oh my, Grandpa, Grandpa against younglings. Obi Wan Kenobi versus Luke Skywalker. The fight meets back on the menu, boy. <laughs> And now it's balanced. It's not balanced now. <laughs> it's not balanced. We have 450 command points versus 875. And look at the money from the album player. Look at the power points from the album player. Eagle is almost level 5. And uh, it's definitely not balanced in this uh, matchup. It's definitely in the favor of the album player Maru now. Because he's only 11 power points away from his 25. Fireball. Fireball him. Do -do 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 -do. Boom. On your face, fireball. Come, my servants. Glorfindel? What are you doing, Glorfindel? He's donating power points. Because he's like, okay, I have so many power, more power points than you do have. Eternal, here are some power points on the, on the menu for you. And now we have Thunderbolt. I'm actually curious if you can use Thunderbolt against Eagle too. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe you can... I mean, depends though. When the Eagle is on the spot and you use... Fire, when the Eagle is here and you use Thunderbolt here, maybe you can hit it with... No. He just leveled up <laughs> automatically with the speechcraft, right clicking on the fortress. I mean, luckily for Isengard, he gets some money from Devastation over and over again. So the second it's available, he can use it, get more money, and again, wait for the cooldown, do it again, 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 and eventually um, you will be able to recruit more units. But it's very hard for him to keep map control as he's kind of being surrounded from every single location. And Lourdes is finally on the field, uh, level one, and that is Arvin too, Arvin. The shield made not the, not the shield maiden, the, the Alvin Princess. Eagle. Eagle is causing problems though. Eagle is causing big, big problems. And industry on this furnace? I don't know about that. The mist? Boom! Just in time to not miss the Thunderbolt. Pikachu! <laughs> Saruman is like the reskin of Pikachu in the third age. Okay, boys, here we go. Oh, the Saruman is MVP, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm see, I see it coming. He will get level two, 10. And guys, listen to me. Now you might say, but Shanks, the Ward of Power from Gandalf is so OP because you can kill everybody. But hey, listen to me, boys. Listen to me. You know what is more OP? You know what is more important when you, like, you know, killing units is great, right? But you know what's better than killing units? Yeah, exactly. Making them fight for I will you represent the men of permanently. Permanently. 
so you can dominate them they will become your servants for the rest of your of the game forever unlike in battle for middle of one which is like a, for a short duration here you can control them forever and ever and ever the watcher i missed watch oh boom i didn't miss the watcher the watcher on your face son all your attack there is negoras on the field too by the way but remember there is lord so lord the second he gets level four cripple cripple legolas he cannot move and then you can just finish him off six power points in the bank void thanks for the follow appreciate that means a lot you have so many people actually today uh, for the first time in the chat thank you guys so much and if you watch that for the first time make sure to follow the channel spf more beef me streams competition going coming up very, i will very represent soon. the men of gondor uh, thanks for the follow as well appreciate it Again, follow doesn't cost you anything. We are really close to 8,000 followers. It would be amazing if we can get 8,000 followers with PFME content exclusively on the Twitch. But I'm sure with your help, we can. Okay, Saruman. Thunderbolt is available once again. Pizza Plus is available and Fireball is available. This dude has three abilities now that can mess you up. And two of them from a long distance too. So the Elven player house ever. And that's the scary part. He has now 22 power points in the bank. He needs only 3 more for the 25, which will be the flood to wash the evil away from this lands, okay? And if you can kind of combine this with the Eagle Summon. Look, remember the Eagle Summon, as you can see, is almost back up, right? So when you get 25 and your Eagles are back up to be used once again, you use flood on the fortress, you damage it and kill all the expansions around the fortress, the Ballista and also the tower, and then you summon the Eagles Use your own eagle, your Glorfindel, and the two eagles from the special summon. Boom. The fortress cannot withstand that much pressure. Do it. Just do it. Fireball them. Fireball. Fireball. Look. Boom. Boom. Thunderbolt on your face. He killed everything, dude. There is no way. What is this? What is this, boys? Is this... The Lord of the Rings, the Battle for Middle Earth 2, the Rise of the Witch King, or is this the Rise of the White Wizard Saruman? That's literally a White Wizard show what we are watching right now. The one-man army himself, rotating, killing, left, right, left, right, left, right. I mean, you cannot produce that fast units, man. He's popping off. Uh, and thanks for the follow. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Almost 24 power points, though. I mean, the album player still got this, I believe, because, you know, when we are taking it, taking a look into the power points, Isengard is still far away from his 25. But remember, if Isengard makes it to the 25, then he will get the chance to summon the dragon. And the dragon is crazily strong. Crazily strong. Okay, boy, so... The Palanti is available. He went for the Palanti too. For whatever reason. A Kribin, I mean. He went for the Kribin. Two debuff the enemy units. Okay. Uh, almost level 9 though. Almost level 9, boys. Do it. The Eagle. The Eagles are coming. Focusing on the buildings. Uh, very smart. Level 6. Shark is on the field. So we have actually now all the heroes from Isengard beside the most important one, of course, who is going to be Wormtong Grima. Grima. Look, Legolas staying next to the pikeman. I have two already. I'm in 17. Kill this, kill this. Nice. But he's getting fed too. Like, I mean, when, you know, when we think about the situation which gives you the chance to kill the heroes the best I way, represent then the you men need of to kind of recruit uh, Tranduil. Tranduil is a um, hero we barely see. We barely see because he doesn't bring too much to the table unless there, there are heroes. But the problem is he needs ages to level up to level 10 for the Torn of Vengeance. I've never seen this ability one time in my life yet in a multiplayer competition of a 1v1 tournament. To uh, Peter, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Okay. Charku is hunting down Arwen. Saruman coming, has the, has the Thunderbolt, has the Wizard Blast. Now, if you don't pay attention, Thunderbolt is hard to hit because you see him casting the casting the ability, you see the animation kind of a little bit, and you have the chance to kind of guess where the ability is coming from, and you can eventually step aside, you know, get away. You should be able to do that. But if you don't pay attention, then it's dangerous. The Eagles have been special summoned now for the second time. He has 20, 
But he has 34 power points in the bank. What is he planning to do with them? Is he saving them for the next game? I mean, that doesn't work this way. You cannot take power points from one game into the other game. And you should eventually use them. You have my soul. Uh, Hotty Pop. Hotty Pipo. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Means a lot. Why Isengard catapults can't fire shots? What? They can. I mean, the expansion, they can. Fire munitions. Eagles are going down. Um, 15 power points. Okay. Isengard is still... Like, the problem with the Isengard, as you can see, he's down to 450 command points, right? He cannot really produce any more units. But Saruman can also work with that because he can legit steal your units even when you have no command point spots level nine boys level nine we are getting there the mirkuts are running for their lives with the sword and arrows they have their no match against one of the mightiest history sent to middle earth i mean what is this fiesta game dude <laughs> this game actually what is happening in this game? I don't even know anymore. The vestation has been used, I believe, for the for the 15th time. And Isengard still poor. Uh oh. Can you actually wing blast Sharko and knock him down on the ground? I think you can't, right? It doesn't work on heroes like that. He went also for the field of fire, so he will make money, but. Arvin just got pinned and killed. Pinned and killed. Legolas. Level 4. Level 7 is required for the Arrowwind. Which also chunks, you know, units a lot. Not that much heroes. Um, I believe you need, when you want to deal with Saruman, you need to kind of burst him down. Because if you just damage him a little bit, he can disengage. You know, get in safety. This eagle has been doing a phenomenal job from Maru. Maru has saved him all the time, so he never lost the eagle. That's why he's level 8. Almost level 8. Um, but even all of that, you know, devastation, a very powerful Saruman, um, industry, and also Field of Fires, uh, Isengard is still the one who is defending, who is not able to push and expand. Because the eagle and also every flying hero like a Fel Beast or the Witch King from Mordor, can deny you from expanding, can deny you from getting more map control, you know? The flying heroes, they have a crazy amount of impact, and people should be realizing that they, that they are kind of crazily OP. When you have like two, three Felbies, good luck having map control against that, you know what I mean? Okay. Mirk boots with the silver and arrows. Let's see. This eagle is doing a phenomenal job. The watches are gonna be available very, very soon. And he finally went for the flood. Okay, flood is available. He cannot go for the for the ends. He needs to get the Elven wood first. But hold on. Take this. Okay. Should be trying to use fireball on the on the eagle, in my opinion. Or the flood is gonna hurt, boys. Oh my goodness. The flood is gonna be painful. What is Sharko doing? He's gonna die to level 3 Malontri, by the way. Is he gonna die to level 3 Malontri? Or Arvin. We shield be Arvin! Look, Charco is here and his work is here. Look, he's just chasing, you know, Palantir to get <laughs> more movement speed, to keep up with the speed of the Arvin unit. What a fiesta. Alright. Um, the eagle. I've never seen him using the Wing Blast. Never ever. Can he not go for the, for the Cloud Break? I mean, even the Cloud Break would be kind of useless, right? Because Saruman is actually offering. Fear resistant with level 5. Even though it's not stated anywhere, but he still offers fear resistant, so. Like, some heroes do that passively. Karsh does it passively. Saruman and Gandalf too. But Saruman has to be level 5, so does Gandalf to give fear resistant. Glorfindel is back in the business, level 3. Has the Blade of Purity, but he cannot use it when he's mounted. Um, do a job for the second time on your face, son. Look, look, also, Glorfindel is flying around the map. Arvin needs, like, one and a quarter more level to get the flat. The eagle is just lurking around, you know, making sure that they are not expanding, that Isengard is not expanding, that he's not building any offensive furnaces anytime soon. 
and kind of keeping the Isengard play in a check situation. The Isengard is kind of doomed and forced to play with like 5 to 600 command points pretty much all the time. I've never seen him getting more than that in the last 10 to 12 minutes at least. This game actually lasts him now for a while and because of the 15 power point choices. So he went for the, all the three, then he went two times for 10 power point, then two times 15. All of that delays your 25. And your summon dragon might be the one key to victory. We will, we will see. I mean, he's waiting with the flood. He doesn't use it. He doesn't want to use it for whatever reason. And he never used it so far. <laughs> so I don't know. Is he trying to win the game without using it? I'm not sure. And Saruman being on level now, level 9 now for a long time, actually. I believe the amount of experience he's requiring to get to level 10 from level 9 is potentially kind of crazy. Maybe he needs to kill like 10,000 units or something to get the one missing level. Which kind of makes sense because it's a game winning point, right? Because you can steal like Mirk Woods with Silverton Arrows and make them fight for you permanently. He went for the upgrades, uh, heavy armor and the forge blades. 21 power point, Alvin units are disengaging, running for their lives, very, very mo mobile, super fast. There is a little bit of a push coming. We see the Malon, uh, the Lumber Mills burning because of the field of fires for 70% more money. And he got crippled. Glorfindel is... Oh, he's gonna use it to save his Glorfindel. If he can kill the heroes, it's gonna be nice. If he can kill Saruman, it's gonna be amazing. Lurt is gonna die definitely, yeah? But can Saruman get away? Use Thunderbolt. Boom, Thunderbolt. Look, even Chunk Legolas. But the, but the Glorfindel, run. he cannot out outrun Glorfindel. Like, Glorfindel is too fast. The Hulk Strike from Legolas and Glorfindel is the one who is going to send the wizard into his reincarnation. Because, you know, he's, of course, an angel. He cannot really die. He can come back whenever he wants to. Okay. I mean, the flood has been kind of used, but I think it was okay because he killed Lourdes and Saruman at the same time. Uh, especially Saruman is going to hurt him. He has no money to revive them both at the same time, though. But flood has a long cooldown. Very long cooldown. The eagle is recovering. Level almost 9. The more levels, the more damage, the more tankiness, the more HP. The builder is getting one-shotted by the midwoods. And... You know, even though it looks kind of bad for Isengard, he has like only this area under his control, right? This is all he got from the entire map, right? But still, because he has like level 3, um, I mean, every one of them is giving so much money. The problem with the Lamry Mills is that you have not infinite, infinite amount of trees on the map. So you will eventually harvest them and then you have no more trees left and the Lamry Mills are going to be kind of useless. So the longer the game goes on, the more, imp the less impactful the lamb remains are gonna have. Especially on certain maps. Like this one is, for example, not with like filled with trees. Maybe, maybe Fungon Forest or something would be better, you know? Eagles for the third time. Very, very soon. The Eagle is sleeping. This one from Maru. Um, the Fortress is tanky. And he has so much money. He has so much money. He can do whatever he wants. But yet he never, ever in the entire game. Not one time had the end mood for the siege. And without the end mood and without your power points, you cannot really siege the Isengard base. It's just too tanky, you know? Level 3 buildings all over the place. Armory is going to shoot you down. I don't know, like a clan sitting is going to shoot at you. The fortress with the towers around it. You have not the DPS to kill it fast enough before they can kill you. Yeah, true. I mean, yeah, ex exactly. I mean, the units he killed with the flat were actually higher level, true. I think they were all almost at max level, at level 5. But, you know, with the 25, you have actually the chance to do more. There comes the Palantium, Int, Warchant, big commitment on Legolas. Legolas is going to get crippled, he's going to get killed. There is no way he can survive. There is a squishy hero. The Mirkwoods are slaughtering from a long distance with the Silverton Arrows. Glorfindel is using the Blade of Purity, using the Strength. And the power of the Alvin faction crushing everything, getting level six. Level six. Saruman is not back in the business yet. I'm assuming he's very expensive to be revived, and also it takes you eventually a long time. He went also for the Weapon of Dunland. Again, all of that is gonna slow you down in the 20, 25 power point, which is gonna be very important. When Saruman dies in the Shire, his spirit goes to goes not to go uh, does not go to Valinor. 
the spirit goes into the darkness of nothing. But yeah, it's his spirit dies not not really dies though. I mean, he's he's not like fully dead. You know what I'm saying? He might be in a, in a bad spot, <laughs> in a bad bad place, but he's not dying. I mean, he's dying. His body is dying, but his spirit kind of living forever. It got flooded. Um, now we have 27 power points uh, for Maru. But I'm not sure if he can go for the Sunflare from the Eagles or if he wants if he has to go for like Ains or Cloud Break before he can do that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We will find out very soon. Isengard is still far away from the 25. Far, far away actually. He needs like what 19 power points to get to his own 25, which is not gonna happen anytime soon. And Eternal is fighting until he went for the Cloud Break. Okay, so now he can go for the Sunflare. Remember, Saruman has been killed. It means there is no fear resistant. So you stun this army and you can wipe them out. That's all Isengard got. If you can take down this army, it will be thousands of resources he will be losing. Thousands. The question is, yeah, you have a crazy play potential, right? You can stun them with the Cloud Break. And then you go with the Eagle and use the Wing Blast. Holy moly. This can be a great Wombo combo. No Saruman, right? Yeah, stun them. Dude, it's your time to shine. You cannot chase the eagle. <laughs> you cannot chase the eagle. You can just go on the water and you can't. It's your time. Oh, I would love to see that, dude. Use that. Go ham. Wing blast them. It would be so nice to see a huge army like that being blasted. Also coming from this, he went also for all the fellowship of the Elven faction. You know, girl, uh, daughter and father next to each other looks like a intro scene from the from the mission or something what is this man three alvin heroes three to the alvin uh, lords i will represent the men of gondor shine my man thanks for the follow appreciate it okay so the uh, the eagles have been summoned already before um he's kind of but what happened what did he, what did just what Guys, why did he use the Cloud Break just now? But why? Can anybody... Oh, never mind. He used the Cloud Break, but Saruman was already back. Actually, this game is still open when I think about it. <laughs> I don't know. Because Saruman is back, and look his experience. Look the amount of level he got. He's very close to be level 10. Like, literally, one Fireball away from level 10. One Fireball, or one Thunderbolt away from level 10. And then... Hallelujah, boys. Fireball. There is a huge army though. And the eagle is putting pressure too. The watch is available. Oh, the watch is available in a bit. Oh, this army is gonna run into it though. What the heck? You like cheese sandwich? I like all I, I'm I'm a person I like I like all the foods, you know? I that is like not something I don't like to eat that much, you know what I mean? Okay. Waiting for the opportunity. Either we're gonna see the, the Watcher or we're gonna see some shenanigans from Saruman. One or the other. Look the look the amazing looking forge blades, you know? Uh oh. He missed it. Oh the flood from Arvin! From Arvin! I was like, how can you use flood again? He just used it. Eagle got killed for the first time actually in this game. I don't know what's going on, it's Fiesta. We see like 10 power points being used at this point. But I think the Isengard army is kind of crashing. Fireball him, nice. Sent him flying, he's gonna use heal to get him back to full HP, kinda. And he can disengage because he's very mobile, remember, right? He can, I mean, Lourdes cannot catch to him. He's just too fast. And the Watcher was winning the fight, but unfortunately, Saruman missed the Fireball, uh, missed the Thunderbolt. And he kind of wasted the Fireball on, on Glorfindel. And for that reason, he couldn't get any experience from this entire battle. I mean, that was the chance for him to turn to level 10, but it's fine. 15 power points, 10 more power points away from the 25. Is this going to be the time for Isengard to shine? Or will we see the 25 from Alvin Faction way sooner? And remember, the Flood is a quarter away from being ready for the second time. So Flood and Sound Player combination can already chunk the Fortress a lot. And even the units around it, Sound Player deals massive damage to units too. And then you have the chance to commit. But for whatever reason, don't ask me why, don't ask me how, this uh, Alvin player 
Maru doesn't like ants. He doesn't like to siege. And I have bad news. When you don't like ant mood, when you don't like ants, you have like almost no possibility to crush this castle. It's just too tanky. Just too tanky. Damn, god damn. This is Maru betting on himself to lose the game. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Maybe. It's all part of the plan. The ram. Look, Isengard is sieging before the Alvin faction player. Can you imagine that? We will help you sieging way before that. The Malone 3, big push, big push, level 3 is going down. A lot of money, but what's the matter if you are not using it? What is the matter if you are not using it? This army is looking sexy to me. He will be reviving his eagle very soon. He has still 1000 command points, finally dropping to 925. You know, Isengard player should be just trying to get the power points now. He's being surrounded. Legolas back in the business, almost level 6. Thranduil. I mean, finally, it's the first time I see Thranduil after a really long time, you know, I think it's been like years since I saw this dude, Eldron being crippled, but it looks like Saruman doesn't want to overcommit. just use Fireball at least on the Mirkwoods, get level 10 and then steal the Noldors, I think you can steal the Noldors too, you can steal every unit, which is not a hero. Imagine you have Noldors fighting for Isengard, they would be pretty dope, but he's running, because the Alvin power is kind of crazy. See what on arrows on the midwoods, no doors, two elven archer heroes shooting and permanently dealing DPS to you. It's hard to deal with. Okay. I mean, just fireball at least one time. Or not? Fireball, 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 cripple, cripple, cripple. You can't, it's on cooldown. Lancers are coming into the war chant. Uh, he's tanky, okay, beautiful. Galco, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. All right, now fireball. Look the amount of experience he needs to level to level ten. A little bit, just kill some workers or anything. Any? Oh, we have the Alvin bombardment ship. Look, it's out of the range from this extroverse. He's shooting and sieging and destroying the level two furnace. Uh, you love to see it, dude. Oh, that's that's dope, man. I like that. I really do like that. 21 power points and the Alvin player is 28. So he has the chance to put a Sun Flare. Sun Flare can be used on the army and chunk them and take them down. Let's see if that's going to be the plan from uh, Maru. Almost level 7. What a long back and forth, back and forth game. This one is not about to end very, very soon, I guess. Yeah, he got Legolas uh, in Tranduil and Hydria. Yeah. All of them. All three archer heroes from the Elven faction. I mean, he got, he got all the Elven heroes, right? We have seen Elrond, Arvin, Glorfindel, Hydir, Legolas, and Tranduil. That's all the Elven heroes in one single game. 30 power points, but he doesn't want to use it. For whatever reason. The bombardment ship is going down to the Extroverse, but dealing great amount of damage before it falls. Oh, the Sun Flare. Yeah, you see, dude, that's the that hurts, man. That hurts. All the army he was grinding for so hard and for so long. What is the matter? What is the matter if you can't get this dude level 10? I cannot believe it that he dies before he gets level 10. I cannot believe that. My wounds are deep. My wounds are deep. And this Arvin is going to be in a safe spot. Eagle can do whatever she wants, uh, whatever he wants to do. And the summon dragon. But the flood one shots the dragon. No way, dude. I was hyped for this for so long. And then you finally see the Isengard player grinding, playing out of his mind to get to 25. The dragon gets summoned and then the flood pew, gets one shotted. One shot it just like that. Just like that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a game, what a game, what a game. And remember, that's not even the final game in this best of five because the score is 1 1, so we will have a bare minimum one more game after this one between these two players. And then later on, we will jump into the real matches, into the not real matches, but into the El Clasico matches between Sauron, uh, the winner of the previous tournament, and Smoky, Musa Smok. 
that's gonna be the, the that's the, where the fun begins, you know? That's gonna be the fun part about that. Um, so at least use the flood defensively. Yeah, he was like, oh, it's 99.9% .9 EXP, like 0.01% EXP missing to level 10, and he couldn't get it. He couldn't get it. But I'm telling you, if the Alvin player keeps refusing to build the end mood, this is gonna be won by Isengard eventually. Eventually, it's gonna be, be won. Because the Dragon Strike can also be massive. I mean, look at this, dude. That's Look at this. Tower, 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 tower. And if you don't know, look... Uh, there is one thing you need to understand about the Alvin faction. It is the one faction that has the easiest time to kill stuff, like Balrog, for example. I'm telling you, like, these towers, if you put, like, Mirk Woods inside, and you summon Balrog here, the Balrog of you will die in two seconds. It's so vulnerable against Silverton Arrows. It's so vulnerable. <laughs> I've seen this multiple times, you know, in Elves against Goblins, the Goblin player finally being able to recruit, uh, to summon the Balrog, and then the summon, the ba summon Balrog actually gets, like, one-shotted by three Milkwoods. What is he doing? He just entered all his heroes. I don't know about that, man. What was the longest game you cast? <laughs> I mean, this is already getting close there. Already getting close there, to this point. Are the Owls favorite in this match? Up? Um, I, I would say it's pretty even. I would say it's pretty even. I would say Isengard has definitely the chance to win this. Cloud Break. Who's too tanky, Pikeman? Too tanky. You know, but you know where the uh, game-breaking point might be. Um, we have not seen this, but if Elrond, Elrond, gets level four, if I'm not mistaken, for the restoration. So now we have reached a point of the game. Saruman is back in the business, by the way. Fine, do it, do it. Don't die before you get level ten. Don't die before you get level ten. Fireball, and finally, finally, dominate is available, boys. Dominate. You know what would be amazing here from Isengard? If you would get Warm Tongue on the field, you know, and steal one of the enemy heroes. That would be kind of crazy. Uh-oh. You want to go for it? Do it, Saruman. Blast them. Oh, you don't need to blast them. Look this dude. He's so tanky. Doesn't even use Blade of Purity yet. Does he heal from the Spellbook? Um, I guess so. It might not be ready quite yet, but he will be getting it very soon. You can get mounted and use Wind Rider. And just run for your life. In the meantime, he's sieging too with this, uh, you know, bombardment ship. Sh ship. Oh, Hygid is gonna die. Yeah, Hygid is gonna die. I don't know what he's doing there, to be honest with you. Arvin is back on the menu. Legolas is level almost 9. And he's getting more and more of this bombardment ship. So instead of going for a regular siege potential with the end mood and three beard and normal ends, the Elven player is refusing to do that and recruiting some bombardment ships instead. He has 31 power points, so he has the power points, enough power points to go for the Elven Wood and summon the ends to kind of empower this siege and get stuff done way faster. But who needs ends in 2022 if you can just spam bombardment ships in 2022? How much do they cost? Um, 50 command points, and money is not a problem, so I'm not counting the money because he has 10,000. And on this map, I believe the ring hero is disabled, so there is no chance... Oh, he's gonna die. There is no chance that he will get to find the one rank and recruit Galadriel. That's not possible. Where is Saruman at? Saruman has to be around, right? He, I hope that he didn't lose him one, one more time. Nah, he's fine. And he's dominate. Fireball will be used. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Oh, oh, fireball. Ooh, nice fireball. Nice one. It was following him all the way from this spot to this spot. Okay, the watch is available. Ah, okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, man. Two end moods. Finally. Finally. I, I think he realized, okay, I cannot win without <laughs> the end mood. And finally, there comes the end mood siege. Eagle is back on the menu. I think he lost him now two or three times, but it's fine. I mean, look at this. I mean, even when he kind of losing everything, like breaking through this defense is kind of very hard. Like there are like one, two, three, four, five, six towers around the fortress. And every single one of them have the up armor up, uh, arrow upgrade. Not everyone. These two have not, but other one have it. 
I mean, he has so much money. Like, you know, he can do whatever he wants to, right? He also went for the end allies. He has three bit on the field. Can you steal the end too? I'm not sure. But I'm sure that this guy with that eye can actually hurt. Even Saruman. Look, the Silverton Arrow is coming in clutch. Elrond. What is the level of Elrond? He's only level 3. But level 5 unlocks the Restoration. And that's where the fun begins. Because the Restoration can give you the chance to use abilities twice. And he stole... He stole the units. Um, he stole this Mirkwoods from him. And now they are fighting for Isengard. There comes the Thunderbolt on Elrond's face. Elrond has the Atelas will be using it to get a bit more HP. There are too many Alvin heroes and most of them are highly leveled. And the Isengard player will be forced to disengage. The Treebeard has been killed but it's okay. Again, money is not a problem for elves. He can just you know keep repairing or rebuying him all the time. And when this guy gets level 4, the Dead Eye will give you a chance to extend your range, damage, and also speed, attack speed. And you can keep sniping Saruman from a long distance, you know. And it's gonna deal crazy DPS over and over again. And remember, you are attacking super fast, so Saruman cannot really play the game anymore. Arwen, level 7. So, for you to understand, you know, the potential is kind of crazy. Like, this guy has Arrow Wally, right? And um, this guy has, like, Blade of Purity, for example. He's very close to Starlight 2. And you can use all of that stuff. All of that. The Golden Arrow, the Flood, the Arrow Wally, you know. I don't know, like, the Thorn of the Engines, the Dead Eye. All of them you can use twice when Eldron is level 5. You use it first. Eldron uses Restoration. You can use I it again. No tree. This is kind of crazy. Okay, so the Siege will begin... Finally, yes, in total, three beards, one end, and he has the potential to summon two more ends. The Sun player is always almost available. And the Isengard player still needs five power points for the Reign of Fire, uh, for the Dragon's Rise, sorry. Oh, what? <laughs> he just one shot the end. <laughs> Saruman, the End Slayer. I mean, he has the Watcher, right? The Watcher can definitely do great stuff. But look at this fellowship of the Alvin army. The fellowship. Arwen, Legolas, Trand uh, Haldir, Lorfindel, Arwen, and Tranduil. This is all the Alvin faction have to offer from the heroes. The uh, Treebeard is sieging. The level 3 furnace is going to be taken down first. That's going to drop down the Isengard plate to 550 command points only. He doesn't have the upgrade on the fortress for the Thunder Strike, for the Thunderbolt. But remember, Saruman can use it. Ooh, 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 arrow volley on your face. Chunk, chunk, chunk. He chunked them a lot, actually. He killed a few of them and damaged the rest. And remember, the Sun Flare is about to be ready. So the Sun Flare can one-shot the entire army. One-shot it. The War Chant, he's towering up. He's towering up. Ten towers. You crippled Tranduil. Smart. The flood from Arvin, also smart. Eagles are coming. Fiesta is happening. And this game, one. finally, and I say it, yes, finally comes to an end. Lord's taking me. care of the Tranduil, being the fighting Urukai himself. But does he stand a chance against the mighty Glorfindel? And the answer is no, he doesn't even hurt him. But Saruman is like, Lord, you are my first creation. I got your back. And there comes the dragon strike on the enemy heroes. And they are not dying. They are too tanky. They didn't even, not even Arvin died. Can you imagine that? Not even Arvin. Can you imagine? The Sun Flare kills almost everything in a, in a second. And the dragon strike doesn't even get the chance to kill Arvin. One of the squishiest heroes in the game. <laughs> okay. I mean, now the dragon strike is on cooldown. And look at this. The Flat and also the Sun Flare is going to be available at this, uh, almost at the same time. And now what he needs to do is just revive your... Oh, but look at the money from the album play all of a sudden, right? He's kind of poor now. He's kind of poor now. Okay. All of a sudden he has not, not much money. But he's getting money though. He has 1000 command points. He just invested all the money into his towers, right? And he has Noldors in this one. Mirkwoods, Mirkwoods in this... To, so, you know, even though it seems like he has not much around, but he has still all the heroes alive, besides uh, Tranduil who got killed, and also every single tower almost has units inside. And the siege will continue one more time. Again, he can use Cloud Break. Th oh, that's crazy. Uh, that, that's, that's crazy. That, 
And even Treebeard finds it crazy because he just had like a deja vu. He died twice because he didn't know what's happening. Uh, Saruman just fireballed Treebeard and killed him from 100 to 0. And because Treebeard was so surprised about that, he died twice. He died, stood back up and died again. <laughs> because he didn't expect it either, you know what I'm saying. The Watcher, not the best Watcher in the game. But might be able to catch the heroes Arwen <laughs> changing sides and getting smashed. Okay, the Watcher cannot do much anymore. To war! Tribit is gonna be back on the menu very soon. Alright. Follow me. I mean, he has the Flood and he has the Sun Flare. I think that's gonna be the time for you to shine. The, um, remember, the first flood, the last flood was used to kill the first summon dragon. And if Alvin player wants to do that, he can do that every single time. He can always use the flood to counter the summon dragon. But I hope he's not gonna use it. I hope he's not gonna do that. Yeah, he's gonna do that anyway. Oh, he missed the flood! But it's gonna die anyway, right? Yeah, it's gonna die to the arches. The arches are OP. <laughs> okay? I mean... Yeah, that's gonna happen every single time, right? The second you summon the dragon, the flood can be the answer. Oh, the sun flare cannot be countered, though. Nice, dude. The sun flare, you see, instantly one-shotting. Instantly one-shotting all the army. With upgrades, leadership, they don't, it doesn't matter. They get instantly crushed. Instantly one-shotted. There's no animation time. It just shines one time on their head, and they're gone. They're gone, and the population from Isengard is dropping down to 164 out of 425. But it's impressive that he was able to hold himself in the game for such a long time. The siege will happen. We have now in total four ends, and can they get to finish this fortress? The fireball is gonna get rid out of one, one of them instantly. Thunderbolt might be able to finish the other one. Beautiful Thunderbolt into the backline. Arches are getting smashed. Glorfindel being level 9. Saruman wanna fight those ends. But why fight if you can steal them and make them fight for you? He's stealing the end with only a temporary remaining time. But Glorfindel is like, come here, you wizard. That's the last time you steal from me. Lords, back him up. Lords, he saved you. Cripple him. But to lead, Lord Finnell is able to kill the wizard. Lords is throwing his sword. Don't worry, wizard, I will revenge you. And he will be able to kill the killer of Saruman. But there comes Tom Bombadil, the mightiest creature of Middle Earth. And he makes Lords pay for this. The fortress is going down as he operates it with the magical shenanigans. XT is being called, and that's gonna be the end of this long. Fiesta game in the game number three in the best of five losers round one. We have the yellow man of the best player Eternal versus the blue Elven player Maru. Maru versus Eternal. Fiesta games, Fiesta games, Fiesta games. You like elves? He doesn't like elves. <laughs> and he get to play elves three times in a row. One time against dwarves, the last game against Isengard, and now against men. Against Man of the West. Two Malone trees coming up for Elves, for Maru, and on the other side we see Barracks in the first farm. So, kind of early Barracks, but not offensive Barracks. It's something we see more and more lately, you know, men building the Barracks very forward, so you can pressure the opponent way, way faster, but not this game. Good evening. Pat Patian. Great to see you around, my friend. Thanks for tuning in. Pikeman opening. So it's gonna be pikemen into creeping this troll here. And we have four Malone trees into... What is this? Barracks. So four Malone trees into the barracks. Economical opening, but he won't get punished for it. Because Maru is um, Eternal is not gonna harass him anytime soon. He's gonna go for a creep. And that's like a gamble situation too. Imagine if Eternal would build the barracks right here on the spot. Imagine that for a single second. The amount of damage he would have been able to deal to the resource buildings from the Alvin player. Eco spam needs nerf. Eco spam is kind of crazy, yeah. Money, money, money making. We have seen this also a lot in the in the last couple of days. Uh, people are spamming resource buildings like crazy, and you know even when they are losing units, they have so much sustain in the eco that they can spam units all the time. Creeping, easy peasy. 
And, you know, that's gonna be the first push. So, creep with the pikemen, get level 2, get the money, get the creep, and then group with the soldiers and go for the first push with the rallying call. That's like, that's something we have seen also in the past in the version 7. Money will be secured and he's gonna now move from the bottom side, not even bothering to capture the inn, which will give the men of the West faction to recruit the Elvin Galadrim warriors. But he doesn't want to waste time. The steeple into barracks, into Lorien warriors, and eventually some archers later on. I believe also the cavalry gonna be a very important, uh, you know, unit in the situation for for the men of the West faction player because you can empower them quite easily with Elma or Theodin, you know? You can have inst instant leadership, which Alban Faction can't. Remember, Alban Faction has no mounted heroes to give leadership. So their specialty is the infantry, archer spam, while men can make work with the early Elma, and later on with the glorious charge of Theodin, you can actually get stuff done. The Malone tree is going to be found and taken down. It's going to be demolished, though. Oh, the builder, the builder, the builder. Okay, it's going to be in safety. You cannot trample this, you cannot. Archers should be trying to kill the pikemen first though. You have my soul. Thanks for the follow, the Kubus, the Kabus, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Means a lot. The Malone tree is gonna be taken down right after. Pikemen, soldier, soldier, archer. Archery actually from Eternal and not stable. I wasn't expecting that. But I think it should be a little bit easier to defend. The Malone tree is gonna be demolished too behind. He's gonna build the wall up to body block some of the units. Archers keep shooting and keep dealing damage all the time. The cavalry is coming. Does he have pikemen? Yes, he has pikemen, but they are not in position. Rallying call is going to be used, and he has the chance to go for a trample. Trample, 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 trample. Big punishment for the misplay of Eternal. He got trampled again, but now they are getting slowed down. You want to go for a small trample and get out ASAP. The builder might be in trouble from Eternal. The builder is going to get in safety in the last possible second in building a wall up. And the attack should be now easily defended. One more trample coming in clutch. But now the Lancers have to retreat, and that's not the end of the world. Yes, Eternal was forced to use the Rallying Call defensively, but he was able to defend himself quite nicely. And they, you have no chance of chasing down the Lorien Warriors. They are just way, way faster in compared to your units. So it's a good start into the game number 4 from Eternal. He was able to deal economical damage to his opponent without using the buff, so he, cut, he could use the buff then afterwards to defend himself, to counter the enemy buff push. And now all it means, all it matters is like... Play for the map control, control the map, control the game, and win the game. Um, Stable would be quite nice, but he went for the archery range level 2 for the early rangers. No heroes against cavalry, maybe Elma. Without even gunner knights, you can recruit Elma to just keep chasing down the lances all the time. Because pikemen are too slow to keep up with the speed. And look, they are microing around. Because Maru is the on-host player, he has the chance to just micro. The pikemen are not listening, I believe. They are not attacking. He's gonna reposition one more time. And cavalry start is gonna work out for the on-host player Maru quite nicely. There is a big push coming. Archer, Swordman, and Pikeman. Malone tree will be taken down. Maru is just spamming Malone trees. That's all he's doing. Spamming, spamming, spamming. He was able to kill the troll, but he couldn't finish the lair because the archers, they don't deal any damage to the lairs. You will need ages to destroy it. Archer against archer and swordman. The one lens, oh, the one lens, oh, that's why you shouldn't use aggressive stance. Okay, this one is going to be taken down. It's going to be demolished by Maru to get some money back. Again, the earlier you demolish, the more money you will get back in return. But they shouldn't be able to finish off the steeple. Counter push. The farm is going to be under attack. The Lancer has to be careful. There are some Rohan spearmen you need to avoid fighting. But it looks like you want to destroy this and run this way. But it's a little bit too risky though. A little bit too rust. Oh, that's also risky. Why would you show your ranges like that? Oh, they come out and they get instantly wiped. But he will be at least able to defend the farm. That's good. That's good. And the Ranger was able to survive, right? So look at their HP. <laughs> they have like 1 HP left. But you can build the well and get them all back to the full HP anyway, so it's not, been, it's not the end of the world. But you see the Malone trees, he loses them, but he replaces them immediately. That's why his command points are still looking good. 450 against 525. Even though Eternal was actually able to kill multiple Malone trees from Maru already. But he's able to push now back. 
Um, what you need to kind of bring to the table is, you know, as you can see, Eternal is going for like more infantry focused army, right? So he's getting pikemen, swordmen, and rangers or archers. And I believe in this situation, the best call you can make is to recruit Theorin King of the Men of Dress faction and support them immediately with level 1 leadership. So your leadership plus the rallying core buff, you can out damage the elven army big time, especially because of rangers, they are way stronger than Lorraine archers, and you can this way uh, win the fights, way way easier. You can see the healing is kind of very very slow, so one well will need legit like 3 minutes to get them all the way back to the full HP. That's why you see most of the time people building more and more wells. Maru is not paying attention to his lancers. And that's of course feeding a lot of power points to his opponent. Level 2 farm will be under attack, but he's body blocking very nicely with the Rohan Spearman paying attention to that spot. They will have to reposition. Um, he has the chance to go for rebuild. I think it's worth it to save this. He also went for the banner upgrade on the fortress, which by the way, besides giving of course a reduction on the heroes, also gives you leadership around your own fortress. Trampling the Lorien, uh, the Rangers, very smart move from Eternal to switch in the whole ground stance just in the last possible second, but he will end up losing the full battalion anyway. The rebuild has been used to save the farm, but during all this time there is no pressure on the Elven player and he keeps expanding all the time. Smart move from Eternal, building offensive farms, I really do like that. But without speed, without cavalry, you cannot keep up with the pressure on the map. Like your opponent can. The farm is going to be demolished. 600 command points available for Eternal. This farm, this farm and this farm are very important. But remember, the rebuild is on cooldown. So you cannot use it for the next couple of minutes. And his opponent is up to 10 power points. He has the chance to go for a mist to debuff the enemy units. Hannibal, welcome. Maru <laughs> ran, <do> ran doomed. <laughs> ran doomed, yes. You got actually three times in a row the Alvin faction. Which is kind of odd because there are seven different factions and you end up getting three times in a row the same faction. That's kind of, you know, maybe we should play lottery tonight. Because the, the chances are quite low, you know. Okay. I mean, he never recruited any hero, but he went for the banner. So with the banner, I believe you can rec recruit your theory for like thousand resources or something. It's very cheap to recruit heroes like that. Especially cheap heroes, they become even cheaper. The Alvin player keeps spamming units and Malon trees. Units and Malon trees. Look at this Malon tree here. He's gonna build a tower. We get some peasants upon the field from the inn at the top left side. That's the special unit. The Alvin faction gets, gets the chance to recruit. Keep going. Lorian warriors are running it down, <laughs> literally. The build is getting in safety. And again, this farm and this farm, these are the most valuable farms for the Man of Twist player channel. And there comes the big push with one ranger, two archer, battalion of the Gondor, and a couple of pikemen and swordmen. Let's see how much damage this will be able to deal. There is some defense though. And Mist is going to be used eventually to debuff them right on the spot. He needs to use Mist, yeah. Misting, debuffing, weakening the enemy units. Makes it easier for you to kill them. He's fighting also around the well, which means they will... Oh, look, look, he wanna get into the backline. Beautiful trample, beautiful micro from Maru, killing the one archer behind. But you should not overcommit into the pikemen. There are too many pikemen on the field from Eternal, and he needs to now force... Uh, he needs to now get disengaged. There comes Tom Bombadil from the Man of the West player Eternal to kill the remaining peasants around. Glorfindel is on the field though, he is gonna get dismounted. Remember, Tom Bombadil is also a great counter hero, because he can keep knocking down your heroes on the field or on the ground all the time. Eternal coming with a reinforcement group. In the meantime, there is a tower, he's creeping with the peasants, the Warclear. And we have 575 command points available for Maru. Now dropping down to 500, after losing the level 2 Malone 3. And Eternal on the other side has 700 command points, beautiful Sonic Song. Very well done. Three bark TV. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. It means a lot. Everybody who's new to the channel, guys, we have a tournament going on right now for Beef Me 2 Rise of the Witch King on the patch 2.02 version 9.00 beta. That's the first round of the losers bracket between Eternal and Maru. That's the game number four in the best of five. 
and we have also more games coming up in the in the following days you know for example the semi-finals in the winner bracket in the finals in the winner bracket as, as well as a lot of games in the losers bracket the builder is gonna be killed this game is looking pretty good now for Etiano. I think he got this game under his control. Like the builder has been killed. There are no arches inside the tower. Mm, but he doesn't want to commit to this area yet. There is Glorfindel only, but only level 1. Lots of rangers. That's gonna be dangerous. And what you can do is you can eventually get some tower guards, you know? Yes, Boromir on the field too. But remember, Boromir got a complete rework. It means he cannot stun the enemy units anymore. It used to be one of the craziest, I mean, greatest combos back in the day, you know? And that was kind of forcing, in this matchup, especially the Alvin faction to go for the Alvin Wood, for the Fear Resistant. Just to avoid Boromir's Horn of Gondor. Because Boromir Horn of Gondor was a game-winning move, especially with Rangers combined. Remember, Boromir can level them up with level 4. So, you level them up from level 1 to level 2 instantly, which means you can unlock the long shot. Then you blow your Horn of Gondor, stun them, you easily land your long shots, and easy peasy. Now the stun effect got removed, which means your long shot is going to be way easier to be dodged. Beautiful. The farm is going down. Six twenty-five command. Oh, but this one, if oh yeah, they're gonna be able to destroy it. He has rebuilt on cooldown. They're gonna get so much experience. Watch this. She got like what? Let me check. She got like one and a half levels. She was zero XP on one le on level one. She got like one and a half levels from one single farm. Arvin actually levels up very very fast. Level three, but run Arvin, run 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 run. Not this way. You have Atelas. Atelas, Atelas, Atelas. Do it. Don't type Atelas available. Please don't. Please don't. Okay, she's gonna be in a safe spot. Atelas being used. Beautiful. Okay, 550 command points available for Etiano. His command points kept though. He cannot recruit any more units anytime soon. And his opponent has 835, but he has not many units upon the field. He's just spamming Malone trees left and right. And he's up to 9 power points. Remember, the mist is going to lead you later on to the Eagle Summon. And Eagle Summon, I don't know if it's a good choice or not. Because Etiano has too many uh, arches on the field. Too many ranges on the field. It's going to be tough. Maru, the South Korean StarCraft 2 player. I don't know, man. I've never watched StarCraft in my life. If you would show me a game and would tell me this is StarCraft, I would believe you. Because I don't even know how this game is looking like. Market, please. Is on the field with the Grand Harvest and also the Siege Materials coming in clutch to get 50% of the money back, which actually is a pretty good investment. You invest 500 one time, but every time you lose a building, even when you don't demolish it, you get half the money back every time. Okay, now the man player is kind of camping. Uh oh, 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 the splash damage. Oh, this splash damage. Oh, 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 this hurts. Does he have heal? Uh, he can go for it, but he's so fast. And that has to be one of the most unfair things in the world. Imagine this guy coming in, dealing damage, and always is able to get away because you have no catch potential on him. Unless you have, like, mounted heroes or cavalry. But with infantry or infantry heroes, you can never catch him. He's gonna use heal. Atelas, I mean, from Arvin to get back to almost 50% HP. And there comes the big commitment with the Lancers. You will be able to find the farm behind and destroy it. It's pretty good. And now the commitment. He wanna just finish off the level 3 farm, I believe. Look, he's chunking it. He has 50 power points in the bank. What is Arvin doing in the meantime? There are too many units building shooting at you. Level 3 farm fortress is shooting as well. He might need to use the heal, otherwise he might lose the Glorfindel. Never mind, he's gonna be good to go. <laughs> he's just too fast. There comes the Eagle Summon. He wanna just finish off the level 3 farm, which he should be able to because Rebuild is on cooldown for the next 30 seconds. And that's gonna drop down the Man of Dress player to 625 command points. That was the last leveled up farm. Every other farm is level 1. If he can kill the marketplace, it's gonna be also pretty nice. Now all the farms produce way less resources. 
Bilzan, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. And he's gonna just focus on the resource buildings, just why not? You don't need to kill units, hurt the eco, and drop him down to less and less and less and less command points. But the eagles, as you can see, are killing the eagles, uh, the uh, rangers, I mean, killing the eagles quite fast. One of them is gonna be killed. But before that happened, uh, he killed yet another farm. So we have 885 command points available for Maru. Um, he has 5 power points after the Eagles. And his opponent, Etiano, is down to 575 command points after losing multiple farms. And he has 12 power points in the bank after the Tom Bombadillo special summon. And uh, this dude is actually doing a phenomenal job. The Eagle is still remaining. He killed a full Ranger Battalion before he goes. Such a beast and such a powerful summon. Beautiful. Where is Rohan when Gondor fails? Where was Gondor when Plains of Linden fell? This map actually originally called is called West Emnet. This map is a map from BFME 1 which got redesigned for Rise of the Witch King with the name Plains of Linden. But it's basically West Emnet. There is a tower coming up which is in a, in a really random spot. Um, I think the tower would be a much better choice here on this spot to block this pathway. But I think it's not too bad. Three Malone trees next to each other. <laughs> That's not how you're supposed to build. There is a level 2 farm hiding at the top right corner. The end mood number 1 into the end mood number 2. Just siege, siege, siege. You also have Noldors, by the way. One, two, three Noldor warriors. Uh oh. Good luck dealing with that, dude. Your rangers, they don't stand a chance. Your tower guards in the porcupine formation don't cause any problems, any troubles either. They are supposed to be a very tanky tower guard. They probably are also, but the Noldors are just hitting like a truck. The Boromir, Aragorn. Aragorn is gonna be forced to use heal on his ally. But Boromir is getting bullied, bullied, bullied. He was not even getting the chance to hit level 2 yet. In the meantime, look at this. He was able to save the one Noldor. There comes the Hobbit summon from Eternal. You want to just finish them off. But again, keep in mind that they are fast enough to just run. And as long as you can stop them from running, as long as, like, as you can slow them down or stun them, they can always disengage whenever they want to. And all the heroes and all doors are going to get in safety. Barely. One of them might die. Yeah, one of them is dead. But it's okay. It's okay. You know? There is another forest coming from the bottom right. They will be able to find the farm, which is going to be taken down by the peasants. And you see it's like farm and lumber, um, farm and malone tree spam fiesta. Pretty much. Samwise the brief. It's gonna be shot in the face by the Noldors and going down. Okay. So, where, are, where is the siege? He's recruiting three beards. Um, we have eight power points in the bank after the heal, rallying call, mist and eagles. So he is like 17 away from the flood. The man player just went for the Hobbit summon, which will slow him down in the 15 power point department. So he needs 15 first. And he's like, what, nine away from that point? And then afterwards, he needs to save 25, you know, to get to the Earthquake or the Army of the Dead, which is a long, long, long way to go. Help! The tower's actually giving a lot of vision through. Look, he's able to see like this full area with these two towers. And also the Elven player is able to see a lot. Look at this. He is able to see the full mid area. He has no vision around this side, which is kind of unfortunate. And also kind of funny that this creep is still remaining on the field. There is a level 2, almost a level 3 farm, which is producing so much money for Eternal. But because he's not paying attention to it, I mean, Maru, he will keep getting money from it. Uh, to be honest, I'm a big... I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of Aragorn. I think he doesn't bring really too much to the table. I would say that Glorfindel has potentially more impact than Aragorn has because he can get mounted, he has Blade of Purity, he's very fast on, on foot too. He doesn't need to be on, on horse. And Aragorn seems to be like a meatball who attacks super slowly, is slow hero, can't really catch up to anybody. And you can easily disengage from him. The siege will begin and the power points are rising. Look at the Snoldors, are slaughtering the army. Aragorn can't even approach them. He has level 2 though. He has the Blade of uh, the Blade Master. Farms are going down 1000 command points versus 525. Maru is pushing to win this game. And finally, unlike the last game, he's sieging also with 3 beards. 
Remember, the man faction can use rebuild, but he has to commit now on this fight. But that's easier said than done. We have Mirkwoods and three Noldors, and there comes the Cloud Break, and he's saying, You shall not move. The damage output is kind of nutty. Also, Glorfindel is going to be set inside the jeans. He's on the hunt. There comes the Flood. The <laughs> what is this fiesta? Like, what can you do against such a reckless seat? Boromir is going to turn. Glorfindel is going to use the Blade of Purity. Aravin is here. Aragorn is getting chunked. And all the warriors are murdering and slaughtering the Man of the West heroes. The siege will continue. The fortress is being below 50% HP. He can rebuild it. He can heal it up a little bit. But I think as long you got lucky with my worse, worse matchups, you can rebuild it, but there is no follow-up. You cannot can abuse like you do. No problem. Eternal got actually to play only one time Dwarven faction, and I know that he likes Dwarves the most, but then he got to play only uh, different factions, like Isengard one time, 